In this part, I would like to show you how to take a, a real object, uh, for instance, this uh, glue bottle, and uh, basically translate it into a uh, three-view orthographic drawing. Uh, and then what I'll show you how to do is to take that three-view orthographic drawing and translate it into a, a three-dimensional, two-point perspective um, drawing. Uh, from those plans. So let's start off by uh, taking a look at this uh, glue bottle. So the first step in uh, doing an orthographic layout um, off of a known object is to really just look at it in terms of simple proportions, um, rectilinear proportions. So in the case of this glue bottle, obviously there may be other much more uh, complex objects, but uh, we'll use this as a basis. So you can see that it generally has a very rectangular um, proportion. It fills a rectangular space. So that makes it pretty uh, easy for us then to uh, derive a proportion from this object. So uh, for instance, I'm using my fingers right now to basically see how tall it is versus how wide it is. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the width as a measuring stick for how tall it is. So that's what proportioning is, is to find an existing feature on an object and to use it as a measuring stick. So it looks like it's a sort of a one to two ratio of width versus height. So let's start off with that because that is essentially the bound, bounding box for this entire object. All right, so let's do that. So uh, since we are not drawing one to one, uh, one to one scale or full scale, uh, what we'll have to do is we'll have to take this measurement here and maybe scale it down a bit so that our drawing will will fit overall within the paper space that we have here. So what I've done is I've put a mark uh, down here that represents the width, and that's going to be our measuring stick from here on out. So since I know that our views will line up from the front to the top view, uh, I can actually go ahead and extend this, uh, this line all the way up so that I know I just broke the rule of the broken line here, so um, kind of a bad habit there. But what you want to do is try to make sure that you keep your lines um, a little bit uh, perpendicular as much as possible. All right, so now that we know that it is about one unit wide, this, this wide, we can actually kind of use our fingers as an initial, initial measuring stick to block off the rectangular or rectilinear proportion. All right, so, so we have that. Now all we have to do now is just to successively break down this proportion uh, so that uh, we can get some of these smaller details in here. Uh, for now what we'll do is we'll ignore this uh, label. Uh, what we're going to really just look at are this collar piece here and this uh, tip right here. All right, so, uh, so obviously the, this is the next major feature. So what we can do now is actually use this as a measuring stick to see how this proportion here relates to the rest of the body. And guess what? It looks like it's basically about a third of its height. So since we know that this is, this is the total height, uh, what we can do is now just split it into approximate thirds uh, we, I just do this visually by eye, and I'll just split it into thirds. Now also, one thing to note is that since it is a symmetrical object, we want to use the center line as a guide for our proportioning as well. So in this respect, we will want to add a line down the center. And notice that I'm just continuing the lines up because I know I will need these lines later when I'm constructing the, the top view. All right, so now we have this into thirds. So what we have to do now is look at this top piece itself and determine how tall this collar is relative to the rest of this um, tip right here, this, sec this third section up here. So, uh, so it looks like it's a, about a thirds relationship again. So uh, what we can do is do this. Now obviously the top tip right here is um, a little less than a third so we'll just account for that. So now we have subdivided proportionally um, all the features of this glue bottle uh, vertically uh, height wise. 
So now what we have to do is to think about the width, uh, all of these widths right here that we have uh, going on over here. So uh, again, we can use a known feature that's on here. So we have this, this collar. Uh, so it looks like it's about, it's about half of the width of this total thing. So uh, well, all we have to do now is, let's see, I always have to refer to my object here. Uh, let's see, so this is the tip, that's okay. So this is going to be the collar, the start of the collar. And I'm actually going to introduce a little bit of a, a taper to this collar because I know that, um, I know it actually has a little bit of a taper. And um, the next thing to do is to look at this part right here. That looks to be about halfway in. And that goes up to a taper as well more of a straight taper and then the last bit is more of a sharp tip up, up here okay so now you can see that I am just trying to capture in this initial sketch um, the major uh, proportions of this object all right and then really the only thing that's left on this is the little little gap right here and the slope of the shoulder and the rounds in the shoulder so that we can do kind of by eye uh, because we have the object right in front of us, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, this slope is very, very gentle, looks like, so it's hard to see against the white, but it is very gentle, so we can just go ahead and bring that down. Uh, we do want to note where this, uh, where this actually hits in the corners, uh, and then all we have to do is actually round the bottom. And it's pretty rounded, so it's got a relatively large radius at the bottom. Okay, so and there we have it. So we've got the front view uh, pretty much completed. So now all we have to do is just generate the rest of the views. Um, really, it's not too hard. Uh, so what we can do is generally we can either do the side or the top view, but let's go ahead and uh, just choose one. We'll go ahead and do the top view since that seems pretty straightforward. Um, and I say that because really we, you'll notice that this collar on this entire piece up here is essentially circular. So uh, we know that uh, since we have the width here, that also represents a diameter in the top view. So we already have our diameters pretty much worked out. Uh, we know the diameter is pretty much from here to here. So if that's the case, uh, let's actually create a new front edge up here. So that just represents uh, a line that goes here to here. Okay, so it's the front surface. Uh, and then we have our diameter here. So all we have to do is we have to just draw a square up here. And this allows us then, from what you know about squares and their relationship to circles, to scribe a circle through here, okay? And then the rest of it's pretty straightforward because we know that we know that this right here does not go past the boundaries of this circle. So it's all about just um, being very observant with your object, really looking at the object very carefully, utilizing features that are already on the object to uh, garner what you need. Uh, frankly, this, this tip here is a little bit short, so what we can do uh, in, in the cleanup phase is really to I eyeballed that circle, but I really should have drawn the construction lines out there. Okay, so this is our center line, by the way. All right, so we have this information here. Really, the rest of it is, well, if you want to, you can draw another smaller circle and then this. So essentially, these lines are all placeholders for us to do our layover of a trace paper to do a very really tight cleanup uh, over this uh, construction drawing here. All right, so we've got the main features. Now all we have to do is, of the front and, top, front and top view, now all I have to do is transfer this top view into the side view and making sure that the side view also corresponds to the front view. So this, uh, this basically follows the idea of the unfolding box idea that uh, uh, we mentioned in class earlier to where your front view your top view and your side view are all related to each other in terms of a unfolding box. 
uh, and we're going to use this idea to generate the side view here. Okay, so now that we know this, what we can do is actually use what's called a 45 degree angle method. So uh, first of all, let's go ahead and determine where the front line of the front surface is going to be for the side view. So we always want to offset them just a little bit. We don't want the views to be butted right up against each other. So now what we can do is see where this front line for this surface uh, hits this line here. This forms the front surface line of the other. Uh, really shouldn't have drawn over here, but uh, hopefully you'll still be able to get an idea. So where these meet right here, here and here, is going to be where a 45 degree angle line will be drawn, okay? And this 45 degree angle line just allows you to project your lines across from your top view and bring, in this case, it's only just one line really, but actually you can, uh, you can actually project your center line across to this uh, 45 degree line and then bring it all the way down so that you basically have a fairly faithful translation of your top view depth to your side view depth. All right, so now all you have to do really is just to take and translate your lines, your major component lines from the side view over. Uh, you actually can take the circles up here, use the 45 degree line and project them down down and basically get a, a general idea of where the thicknesses go. So there, this 45 degree line technique is a very, very helpful um, technique to know. Uh, the shoulders slope down here so they basically kind of form this little U-shape uh, with a curve right here, straight, straight up and a radius at the bottom and a flat at the bottom. So basically what we've done now is essentially taken the use of the front view to generate the top view and then use the top view via the 45 degree transfer line to generate your side view along with the front view. So now we have a complete set of a three view drawing for this particular glue bottle. All right, so I think we, we pretty much hit the um, we pretty much hit this uh, proportion pretty well.